sitting here talking to Terry Hank about the difference between Santa Cruz and and West Palm Beach, Florida, uh, yeah. and yeah. and uh, what the what the surfing is like by comparison. And you say there actually is surfing there. Well, yeah, once in a while it gets once in a while world class, but it's not. You wouldn't come here to just to surf. You know, if right you're here, there's there's some really good waves. Yeah, that happen. You know from. I never sure, knew but, that. But I mean, it's like a place like Santa Cruz is world class. Oh plans, yeah, and absolutely. And it, it's always waves. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a Pacific Ocean. It's just a right, much different ocean than yeah, the yeah. Atlantic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, so I mean, you know, you seem pretty settled in, and you've been yeah. able to kind of do a bi-coastal thing where you would right. you'd play in California at the state fairs. Sure, I, I, the whole and, fair and spend basically the, the summer. The summer. Yeah. yeah. At the same time you're doing the the fair circuit, you were also doing Bay Area clubs some, sure. and you're yeah, doing afterwards, California places. Before and afterwards, we do yeah. fairs. Fest, I mean, do clubs, right? Concerts. Did you do festivals. Did you do touring out here for a while? Out. I mean, in Florida. Before, before I moved here. No, no. once you once yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I I'd, 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 I'd bring the band out. When I first moved here, I tried to bring them out more, but really. Uh, uh, about twice a year, mm-hmm. around November and then in the spring. You know, once it's, there's, it was more seasonal, but now it's getting more year round because more people are moving down here mm-hmm. permanently. Right. But it, it was more seasonal then from uh, kind of after Thanksgiving to to Easter. You know. Right. The season down here, but um, yeah, I'd bring the band out twice a year mm-hmm. for. Two or three weeks, and those are guys you've had with you for quite some yeah, time. Johnny Cat, Johnny Cat, Sue Brand, Brand, yep, and uh, it was Tim, Tim Wager and uh, Butch, Butch Cousins. Cousins yep. Yeah, in the yeah, beginning, actually, the first time. when I first moved out of there, uh, Kid Anderson was still in the band. Right, Kid and Anderson. You you basically gave Kid his first gigs. Well, yeah, yeah. You brought him, brought him over from Norway over here, yeah. from Norway, and right. But um, you know, he would have made it over here anyway but i'm right. glad that but i still got to be yeah. a part of that yeah. and uh, it's been a great for me it's been great you know? i remember the first time i saw him was with you up in edmonton ah and i noticed his playing immediately yes hard not to no i you know. know he's a yeah definitely i think both of us played on his first record yeah. as i recall yeah, too. A class of his own yeah, yeah. oh yeah yeah. Yes. yeah well when i first Brought him over. I said I was doing a CD, and I said Junior Watson's going to do some tunes on it. And right, right. away, yeah, because <laughs> he got over Junior in Norway. It was like the West Coast guys were their heroes. Yeah, you know, even more than definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a trip, huh? Well, they one of the uh, agents over in Norway said, "Yeah, hey, bring the kid over. It'll be good for him because he's getting a little, you know, big for his big out here." <laughs> and I brought him here, and, and he didn't. He was not humbled at all. He, he was, <laughs> I mean, humbled. Uh, right. Humbled, I remember course, one, but, one time, kid. But, you know, he just. Yeah. One time, kid came up to me. He goes, he goes, I could play better bass than your bass player. Okay. <laughs> right. So, Eventually, he got to like my bass player. Yeah, <laughs> it was uh, Steve Wolf. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Great bass we'll player. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let, you know, I wanted yeah. to just kind of talk to you a little about the old days because uh, uh, you were with Elvin for how many years? Uh, ten years. Ten years. That's I, from seventy wild. end of seventy seven to eighty seven. I mm-hmm. I left for one year, and then came back. Right. You know, around eighty three. Right. But you were in there during fooled around and fell in love. Right at the I was on I he. I went down to Florida. He wanted me to join. I came down to Florida, and I and they were doing that, uh, recording that record at uh, the Strut My Stuff album at Criterion Studios okay. in Miami. Wow! So I went down there and I did about four gigs with him, and he wanted me to join. I said, "Well, no, I just put out a forty-five, you know, yeah. and uh, uh, which was, you know, soaring to." Nowhere. <laughs> and uh, uh, anyway, soaring into oblivion. You know, yes, nowhere is built. Anyway, uh, um, so I didn't join then. So I didn't join till late. after that. That record came out at Elm, and then they came out with a live album, and then uh, then I joined after that in '77. Uh, so mm-hmm. when I went down there, it was about '75, I believe. And when was that hit? 
76. Okay. And then when I joined, uh, maybe it was a year after it released, something like right. that. It was still like number three yeah, on the still charts. Huge, you know, yeah, still huge. Yeah. So when I first joined, you know, it was uh, arenas and stuff like That's that. That's amazing. You know? Were you guys the headliners on those? Well, not all. We did Day on the Green. Where, right. No, actually, some of the big arenas were not Day I remember we yeah, did. Yeah, so you're like gig, in the middle of something. Yeah. No, usually just right before. Right know, before the headline. Uh, sometimes yeah. it'd just be two acts and right. another act. Yeah. Wow. But, you know, other times we were the headline. Yeah. I was talking about Magic Dick. I was talking to Magic Dick about the whole thing of playing in giant arenas and right. what, a, what a trip that's got to be. And he said, no, you get used to it. You know what? When I first yeah. joined Elvin, we came back from Alaska. We've been, you know, up all night flying. We came back and did Dan the Green at the Oakland Coliseum. Right. And I remember uh, coming on stage there and, and singing, a, I did like a Wee Willie Wang song, Traveling Mood, you know? Right, 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 right. And I, I did that and, uh, in front of 60,000, 55, 60,000 people. And I'm going, two months ago, I was playing this in, in, in clubs within the Bay Area where there'd be three people who could give a shit. <laughs> Play something we know. And then here it's like 60,000 people screaming, and I'm yeah. going, I could get used to this. <laughs> I also remember thinking when I first came to town, I used to get work. We used to go down and get hired on at the Oakland Coliseum with all the illegal aliens and stuff. We'd be up there sweeping peanuts out of the bleachers. Wow. So here I am in the same spot. The stage yeah. is up in the yeah. bleachers, and I'm going... You know, this last time contrast. I worked this joint, I was sweeping <laughs> plane out of the bleachers. You know, the pay's about the same, but this is a lot more fun. That's great, yeah. man. It is a lot more fun. Yeah. Well, who was so in the was, was Gary Silva in the band at that point on drums? And... No, back it was it was the Don Donnie Baldwin. You know, the, okay. the band from right, the, right. Donnie Baldwin, Fly, the Fly, was in there. Yeah. Uh, Fly Mickey Thomas, mm -hmm. Johnny V, and right. uh, Melvin Seals on keyboards, hmm. and uh, me and Jerry McKinney were the right, only players. Right, right. Who ended up with uh, Hank, Hank Williams Jr. Hank Jr. Yeah. yeah. Now, right. did he pass away? Yes, Jerry yeah. passed away. Unfortunately, he was a great a horn player. Yeah, probably one of the best horn players I ever worked with. Wow. You know? Yeah. Yeah, he was really something. Yeah. Well, that's a hell of a band, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot of bands didn't really want us to open up for them. Cause, you know? cause just because you guys would kick their yeah, butts. I mean, yeah, God, yeah. Mickey singing and yeah. all that. And, and Elvin just had a great show. He always had yes. a, oh, yeah. a great thing going. Oh, yeah. yeah. I would never want to go on after Elvin. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> he's going he's gonna, to, he finds a way. Yeah. Now, did you ever work in the band when Joe Baker was in there? You were saying uh, she worked in your we, band. Yeah, while. she joined Elvin Singer band for a second before right. she joined Stoneground. Okay. <clears throat> she, and she'd already months. been with Elvin. Yeah. Yeah. Because after she left, but during you know during while she was with Elvin, I knew her, and I, I did you know I did a side gig with Elvin, like seventy two or something called hmm. Crabshaw's Outlaws. So oh, we did a little a little tour with. Uh, it was Joe and uh, Steve Miller and uh, Steve Fly Miller, the organ. Steve the Miller, organ player, the keyboard yeah. player. Yeah, Fly. And, uh, and we did, we played a couple of gigs, I remember, a couple of little tours. So you never, you were never in there, say, when Perry Welsh was in Elvin's band? Not when he was in the band. Right. I, but I remember when Perry, seeing Elvin back, before I knew him, I saw him down at the Golden Bear one time. Right. And I remember Perry. And the other big Jim, or not not big Jim, but another guy, Barry's friend, they were the roadies for Elvin. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. And, and they just seemed like big burly guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Beards and you know. Yeah. They were the roadies, and then, uh, you know. So I remember. Barry so he went from, from roadie to being one of the yeah. band guys. Wow. Right. Right. That's a trip. Yeah. Well, one thing I can say is Elvin's always had very colorful. Band members oh, yeah. in and out yes. of that. He kind of yep. doesn't go for any like wallflowers in no, that band. No, no. I'll tell you what. There was a lot of laughs along that. I'm sure. Oh, yeah, I've a heard a lot of crazy, a lot of crazy, a lot of crazy fly, fly sure. Brooks stories. Oh yeah. 
A lot yeah. of stories that we just have to wait till everyone's dead. <laughs> just protect the guilty. I think I saw you one time. Who was the working in the coal mine guy? Yeah, uh, Lee Dorsey. With Lee Dorsey. I, I with think Lee I Dorsey. saw you with I worked Lee. with Alan Toussaint. One right. Time right. And, and like Etta James. Etta. Yeah. And uh, Tracy Nelson. Who was Tracy it? Nelson. Your buddy, and, yeah. And then we. You know, with Elvin, I think we backed up Bonnie Raitt one time. And, wow! And, uh, with Elvin? Yep. Really? It was it was like a ski resort, ski run in New Hampshire. What a trip. summer! Yeah, summertime, and 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 Bonnie went on. You know, she did a solo thing after. You know, we played, and then she sat in with us on cool we set with us. Wow! And then she did the solo thing too. BB, have you? I opened up for BB a couple of times. Did you really? The, wow. uh, uh, at Canocti Harbor. Right. Tower, opened up for Tower several times right. there. And uh, uh, Neville Brothers. Right. Uh, wow. That's the other thing is, I mean, you're one of the guys in the Bay Area, I remember, that was really, you and Ron Thompson were the uh, two guys I remember really being hip to New Orleans. Ah, uh, Yeah. Both you guys. Well, you know, the first, like I say, the first, before I even knew it was New Orleans music when I was a kid. Yeah. The rock and roll that came out when I, you know, all this stuff on special, uh, you know, all coming out of those same musicians from right. Cosmo Studio. Right. You know, that right. rhythm section that, you know, on the Imperial label, on the specialty. On the yeah. Specialty. Yeah. And, uh, you know, even, even, uh, uh, you know, the Chicago label. Uh, Chess. Chess had a yeah. division that Argo, right, a lot of right, stuff right. was normal yeah. stuff. Sugar Boy Crawford was yeah, in Chess. Yeah, yeah. So that music was just, it, I just, that music yeah. got to me when I was a kid. Yeah. But I didn't necessarily know it was. It was from New Orleans. Yeah, it yeah. just came yeah. out of the car radio. Right? Yeah. It came out yeah. of the radio. So, uh, but, you know, that was just, I just loved it. Yeah. Part of me. So later on, you know, and then the whole New Orleans thing when I first, you know, started getting back in it. I heard the meters and, you know, right. Oh, this is cool. And I yeah. uh, got all in. And then when I joined Elvin, we went down to New Orleans, you know, started, so I really you, got really to, didn't hear it. and yeah. then I got to meet a lot of these musicians, right. you know, who'd you meet? Jam Earl with King them. And well, I backed Earl King up one time with Lloyd Jones. Oh, wow. We backed up cool. Earl, you know, yeah. and then, uh, but also I played some gigs with some later with Elvin. What happened was we went down there and, and uh, I kind of had Elvin come with me to go see the Neville Brothers and kind of right. go, oh, look, see, now I got him with Elvin. Right. There. You know? Right. So, yeah. and, uh, so I got, and then, uh, you know, um, Art Neville would come jam with us when we were playing like Old Man Rivers, you know, wow. he'd come and sit in with us. Cool. One time I went down there with Elvin, just, it was just me and Elvin, and mm. it was New Orleans musicians backed us up. Wow. And uh, it was a guy, Jimmy Bolero was a guitar player, he was a mm. friend of us, and he put us together with George Porter, played bass. Wow. Yeah. Cool. So at, at different times, and then with Etta, uh, well, yeah, it was it was um, Leo Nelson Telly right. played Leo guitar, Lo so I worked with him. Yeah, jam with Art, and then uh, and then uh, Ziggy Modalest moved to Berkeley. You know? Sure did. And then yep. I met him, and we, I hired him for a couple gigs. You know, wow, cool. A little club in Concord. Yeah, he's one of the coolest drummers I ever heard. Oh, I, I'm, yeah, yeah. I mean, amazing drummer. Yes, yep. unique and completely amazing. Yep. And, uh, the meters were. Uh, whole part of the era of New Orleans music. Yep. They were the back guys in the background. Yeah, they were kind of like what the, the, the chess studios, right. you know, having like Buddy Guy or Fred Bilo. Yeah. You know, or Otis Spam. That's really what they were in New Orleans. Right. Yeah. And uh, well, after sort of the rock and roll scene, you know, after the Earl Palmer right. era and all that. Right, after the 50s. I mean, at that time in the Bay Area, you were right. really well, kind of one of the real champions of kind of that right. music. Uh, that and soul music and, and Junior Walker and King yeah. Curtis and yeah. all the guys that you did, you know. Right. Yeah, it was, and then when I came up there, then Tower Power was hitting and it was all right. about the funk, you know. Right, You got right. the funkified. Right. And that was good, you know. So it was a little, you know, a lot of that rubbed off on me, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And uh, so it was just all these influences, you know. Yeah, but, you but really got a lot of, uh, I want to say you have a pretty wide spectrum of, uh, well, of musical tastes in terms of, you know, I think what it's, you, you know, can the do fact that I'm like. 78, 
Right. I lived through all these eras. You know, when I first right. came into er, first rock and roll was R and B. You know, R and B right. and everything. You're hearing all that coming from that, and then it slowly switched. And then James Brown, who really turned music around. Yeah. Like, you know, they, he had the soul, and then James. You could hear that trans. You know, that transition when he went from. You know the shuffle to funk, you know, right. and, and then right. in between, Lloyd Nolan, right and, in between. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jimmy Nolan, Jimmy I mean, Nolan, yeah, yeah he Lloyd went from Jimmy that, Nolan, went, yeah, yeah, he yeah. went from the, all that from from being a blues to, guy to, to, to being funky, a funk guy, you know? yeah, the king, and and that really was guitar. such a, a yeah, you know, James Brown was such a pivotal artist, and, and sure was, you know, so all that yeah. affected me, and I liked it all, you know, mm -hmm. so when it's like you know. When I play, it's like all those things come into play, and I like right. them all. You know what I mean? Right. I, I think you can do it right without having people think, "Well, he jumps around too much." You know? Yeah, I think a lot of it's just knowing how to seg, and being a band right. leader, you learn to do that. Right. You learn yeah. to seg. You can take the yeah. crowd on a little yeah. trip here, right? Exactly. And then move. And it's over not too here. jagged that right. way. Right. Right. Yeah. So you know, you're one of those guys. I mean, you know, I feel like we're kind of brothers in arms in the sense yeah. of we've yeah. done a lot of this on yeah. our own. You know. Right. Yeah. We really have, and, sure. and you've won, you know, three yeah. BMAs, and yeah. well, and you know, yeah. people know you. Sure, people well, definitely like know you. You pioneered yeah. this yeah. music, and and you know, stayed true to its form. Yeah, and that's a hard thing to do in this business right. to stay true to something. Right, because I, know. you know, I I write tunes, but I always usually try and keep them within a, a stylistically right. keep them right. You know. I love oh, right. the I love the what was it called pins and needles the oh, one yeah. yeah that's that, a great that Jojo song. Russo a, yeah uh, as I would a title love to maybe and, and a bunch of the one. words and then that's and a great I song. came up with a yeah. groove I, I just yeah. I did it earlier as more of a, a different I recorded it early it's a little different groove yeah. and then I said you know what but I really it, like it what just you got works with, with it that now. New Orleans yeah. feel you know? sure does. Sure. Very fat. Yeah. It's got a real fat stamina yeah. kind of. And and people hear that and they don't know why, but they got to get right. up and move. You know? Right. And it's it's all, it got a little bit of a zydeco Cajun sound. Yeah. And the New Orleans. Yeah. Well, I I, yeah. I admire the fact you know you've been doing this for so long and you and you keep doing it, you keep staying true to it, yeah. and you still got you don't play like you're seventy eight. Well. <laughs> You I got a lot like, of hot air. I got to get. Well, ready. I'll tell you what, it works, man. You you got a lot of verve, man, in what you well, do. Well, you know? yeah, it's all the other things I like, used to like to do, and was <laughs> not that I was any good at them, but they were fun. All those things I can't do anymore. Right, me and you both. So man. this is yeah. what's left. Yeah, we've definitely. Uh, Larry Blake's definitely put me through through the oh, grinder oh, in that, during that time. Oh man. yeah. That was quite a scene there. Man. It was. It was a wild ass scene. All the little back rooms we were oh. talking about when <laughs> yeah. we went on. Those. Clay Cotton blowing his inheritance. <laughs> you know, when I look back, I mean, not when I look, when I listen to all these musicians that I played with, and now I hear them, they're going, God, they were so good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Especially for Clay the time, Cotton, just yeah. beautiful. Especially for the time. I mean, you know, obviously, Ricky Kellogg. Yeah, he, Rick Kellogg. I mean, you know, and and and, and Pugh, Jimmy Pugh's still oh, well, around. Jimmy's you know, still. I mean, he's, and Carl, Carl Severin's still, still around. Guess. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of guys that are still with us. Yeah, but and and a lot all and just getting on. better and better. You know? Right, and a and, lot that have passed on, but it, right. it's still everyone came out of that scene. Right, which is interesting. Dave yeah. Matthews on keyboard. Oh God, yeah, you know, brilliant. With uh, he's with Tower still. No, he's been with Santana. With, that's right, with years. Santana. Right, yeah. with Santana. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, you have all these people that came out of that scene. I mean, right. you know, like you say, Robert Cray really to me was out of the Larry Blake scene in the sense of that he ended yeah. up copping Kahatsu. Well, he got and, the whole band. Everybody Kahatsu, but me. Yeah, Kahatsu, <laughs> yeah. Kahatsu <laughs> Carl, Severide, yeah. and 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 Q. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, Kevin. And, and you know, Kevin we Hay. had gotten those guys in the Elvin's band. Right. We got Carl, and right. Jimmy Pugh. Right. And, like, you know. So they, all these people Elvin. ended up coming out of that Larry Blake scene and going on to some pretty big things. Right. Which is, uh, you know, including yourself, you yeah. know, obviously. No, I mean, I'm just saying, you right. know, all those yeah. people we talked sure. about playing with Ed and Tracy. Yeah. And, 
and all these people, yeah. you know. Yeah. Elvin, blah blah blah. You know, I mean, it's yeah. it's pretty it's pretty oh, remarkable. Yeah, they, I think. Sure, everybody you went know. on to big. Yeah. You know, big time, and are are part of the you know like. Jimmy's a big part of what's going on today. In the Bay, know? yeah. And all, all over the place. Right, you know, with right. The, he's with the uh, Phantom, little Blues, village. Phantom Blues Band and with his oh, Little right, Village Oh, right, 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 with the Little Village, yeah. Yeah, and I was going to say, I mean, you know, the fact that you brought Kid, you know, early on, and Kid yeah. has become oh, such yeah. an integral part of the blues scene on he the is, West Coast he is because like, of Greece. He's now. like... He has his own gravitational force around him. He it's really like does. Universe, yeah. you know. He does, yeah, absolutely. You know. Yeah, yeah. Both those guys together, I think, are kind of a yeah. big part of the the South Bay right. scene that's kind of spread out onto the you know the world. The world, yeah, absolutely. But yeah. anyway, man. Uh, yeah. It was great, man. All right, Mark. And, and you're a hell of a dude and a hell of a okay. musician. And, and Back at you, sir. And you've always you've always been really kind in terms of, yeah. you know. Oh, man, we've always. Being hospitable when I'm in town yeah. and, and so on. You know, so. we've, we've, we've uh, you know, we're always uh, doing our digging for gigs, you know. Yes, we you are. are we're, champion we're, at. We're, we're both brothers in arms in the, I mean, I've had this kind of like, Little network of people, yeah. yourself. It used yeah. to be Gary Primich, oh, and, yeah. and uh, you know Doug Deming is in oh, there. Yeah, and, sure. You know a lot of other yeah. people that kind of you know you bounce Mining things off. Mining the of. area. Yeah, yeah, you mine the area, trade information, and it's yeah. kind of how we stay afloat. Yep. You know because that's how you to tour nowadays. You either have to have an agency that's willing to pick up seven days a week for you, right? Which is almost impossible. Sure. Yeah. Or you have to know how to get the gigs. Right. Yeah. I know. It's never. I've never been successful with getting agencies to get to really. Me, you know. No. Uh, but you know, yeah. But hell, yeah, hell, we do all right. You know? We do all right. Because <laughs> <laughs> we good. Anyway, we uh, good. I got that pot of so, chili yeah. verde. Okay, on the we're stove. gonna chili we're verde time there. coming up. And, uh, and uh, so, thanks again, Terry Hank. Yeah, and I just want to, I'm really having a ball playing with you and your it's band fun. here. It's fun. It's really fun, so man. Fun out here. Yeah, people yeah. are loving it. Yeah. They really are.